Hi everyone, um, welcome back. So we're into map six. It's not the sixth map, it's called map six, but there's more maps prior to this point. Um, and going underground. So anyone who knows deep down will know that um, there's a lot of section in the mines. Um, and obviously the idea behind this, uh, this mod was really to take what I've done in deep down and to scrub it up a bit and reamp it and redesign it uh, to come up with some new experiences within those structures. Um, this map went through so many revisions because I had Ed's amazing elevator uh, that I knew I'd already used once and originally it was intended, I asked him to build it so that I could get the car down into the mines in an interesting way. Um, and I and this was the map where that was going to happen. Um, and the problem is once you got down into the mines, I wanted to do um, some other things. And I couldn't figure out a way to have the elevator go down with the car come out and then have a meaningful amount of play space underground to justify having the car there. Um, now in this situation, we're going to get in the lift, the lift go down, the brake, and then we get out, and we have to leave the car behind. Um, it's yeah, it's kind of pointless to even have the car in this map, but it narratively makes sense. Um, some rockets here, which I don't need because I haven't used my rocket launcher, but um, I thought they'd be handy for some of the ant mine pieces. But we're moving into a new area of gameplay as well for the, the ant mines, um, which is really just a ramp up to the ant mine guard fight later on. The ant mine guard fight was probably the one of the biggest driving factors for the underground space. Because I had it, I designed it separately, as with everything. Um, and we'll talk about it when we get to it. But um, I was really happy with it, but I had to jump through a whole bunch of hoops to justify the weapon stripping, for example, and things like that. So one of them was obviously to lose the car, because um, that experience that we're going to have requires us to not have the car. But I had to put some kind of gameplay in between. So for me, I think this area is probably one of the weaker areas of the, of the mall. Um, it's a means to an end. Um, it's a chance to show it's elevator off again, which is wonderful, but um, it's, uh, yeah, uh, I, it went through so many iterations on this um, that I, uh, I don't know, yeah, anybody who's, who's sort of spent a certain amount of time developing projects like this will know there's a few maps that you just go back to over and over again. Uh, this was my one. So, interesting fact, the Alex that you're about to go through the rest of the map with is not the Alex you started with. Um, at this point, when this elevator stops, I because it's a moving platform, um, oh, I couldn't get her out of the car. I'm trying to remember. So this is a trigger? Yeah, so that I just hit a trigger and now suddenly she's standing up. That is a, 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 an NPC called Alex One. It's not the same Alex as before because I didn't have a way of getting her out of the car. Uh, so I had to kill her and then I had to resurrect a new one. Uh, which means is the reason why she doesn't speak for the rest of this level because I couldn't. Um, in order to make uh, the the animation files work, um, you uh, with the audio in it, you have to. The model has to be called Alex. A L Y X. Um, this is called Alex One, so I can't fire instructions at it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. A bit complicated, but that's why she doesn't speak for the rest of it. At least there's no scripted speaking. She'll she'll react and do what she does. Um, so this is another situation where we've got a foe who's a little too far out of range. He can harass us and cause us some problems. Um, obviously, when we're walking around on these uh, beams and stuff, that's risky. So you've kind of got a choice. You can either stay here and pick him off, or you can live with him and deal with him later. Um, but I like the... I mean, obviously, we're pixel hunting right now, so that's not great. It's very far away. Um, you can still kind of get the outfit. But... Um, not idea, but uh, I like the idea of being harassed from a distance. I did this in the first one, but not to a great degree. And, and this is more of a sort of an entire space where you can, where you are harassed all the way through if you leave him to live. Um, the other thing is the webbing. Uh, I wanted it to feel precarious, but I needed some play space. And having them, having the player just move around on the uh, beams was too unforgiving. It was too easy to fall off. So uh, the webbing was a nice. Um, way of, of having a scary kind of uh you know vibe to it where you could fall and you can see through um, but 
you're actually probably safer than you think. Um, this bit I quite liked. I just wanted to put some animations in or, or some other bits. Um, there, so um, if you, yeah, I, I like that because it looks like she's jumping out into nothing, but actually she's a. Uh, and then you look down and go, oh, okay. Um, or at least some people might. That was the idea. Anyway. Okay, so we're still being harassed because I didn't take care of him. Um, oh, that was a good shot. Okay, normally I'm terrible with the, the delay on the crossbow. I'm, I'm not good at all, but I'm quite proud of that. Okay. Um, and she's leading you along all the time. And, and, you know, Alex is not just she's a companion, but she's also a, uh, a leader. You know, this is a precarious space that players probably don't want to move through. Um, and having these outlines here, obviously, they can knock you off and, and die. It could happen by chance, which sucks, but at the same time. Um, there you go. There's the uh, golden gnome for anyone who's looking for it. Oh, okay. Never mind. Not for me this time. Um... There is a golden gnome in every single map, I think, if you look. Uh, I think I said it before, but I'm not sure if anyone's actually bothered getting them off. But... And also, I don't do any kind of level-by-level -level count. Son of a bitch. See, Adam. Yes! Nice. This is my obsession with dropping down large, chunky uh, things. Um, uh, I like that steppy, chunky, bomb, 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 all the way down. And Alex, Alex sort of leads the way all the way through this map, which I quite like. That is one good thing, as I say, is that Alex can lead you. There isn't an achievement for killing all the grubs, but they're in there because it's fun to kill grubs. And, um, these are going to continually spawn until you get further into the tunnel. I think. Ed's Lantern, uh, looking amazing again. I use it way too much, but it is very handy for a portable light source in a place where um, where there's no, well, theoretically, no electricity. Um, okay, into the next one, a few, um, a few ideas, which is quite good. That sounded like it hurt. It didn't. I've got a, a no-fall damage uh, trigger that you're falling through here so that when you enter the next level, um, it's, uh, yeah. It's a very, also, drop level transitions. I use them several times in this. They're very handy because you're going to, it's a one-way drop. Once again, it's push gameplay, but um, also it's, um, uh, it's, it's handy. I just think it, 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 it's quite fun to do that. <clears throat> okay, this bit took ages to figure out. Um, as with Deep Down, we've got a uh, situation where Alex is going to uh, leave us, and we're going to play through the rest of the maps on our own. <coughs> Excuse me, uh, because Alex is great, but um, she does have some limitations, and there's certain you know I'm constantly having to script where she's going to be and how she's going to keep up with you. And just like in the original, and also once again coming up to the outline guard fight, I couldn't have Alex in the mix, so I had to get rid of it. So this was my idea. I had this ages ago. This was one little area of gameplay that I built all by itself I wanted to put in, which is where she makes a jump, you don't and it crashes, but I had to clip this quite heavily because the player can interrupt her and get in the way or the player can get ahead of her so this is now clipped to death um, and those clips are removed at certain points there's a clip there, you can't ever make it through, and I like the fact you can still hear, you can hear a shout after you as you drop um in my mind, when I first did this, there was this really dramatic moment where you sort of stand there and the floor starts to break and you're standing there looking at her eye to eye and she's like, no, and then you drop. Um, but that wasn't, that was too hard to, to do. It just wasn't really possible. But I think we still get the idea. Now, the other thing I'm doing there is weapon stripping the player, which is unfair. You've worked hard to get all of those weapons um, and I had some complaints about that. But once again, it's necessary to facilitate the next area of gameplay. Now, um, so the choices were either I could put this area of gameplay right at the very beginning of the, the campaign, which I didn't want to do um, because I wanted to start in White Forest and that didn't make any sense to have a, an antline guard when all you have is the gravity gun at that point. Um, and so this was really my only way of getting out was weapon stripping at that point. And um, yeah, coming back. Scrubs are plenty for anyone who wants them. Um, 
Now, uh, this is a, a replication of a puzzle I did in the first one. So it's nothing new uh, with the flare and some explosive barrels, which are fixed in place. Um, there's plenty of flares. I don't really want to run out of flares at this point. Um, most people get it. Oh, yeah. And uh, the game is on. Now, obviously, I'm replicating the gameplay from episode two, where you're chased by the anti guard, and there's not a lot you can do about hurting them. Um, so this is about, um, in my mod Daylight, I had a section where you're chased by a, a strider. And, that, and, and then all you have is a gravity gun. And that the game that we're playing at that point is how to preserve your energy, or conserve your energy, so that... Um, oh, shit. Okay. So that you... Uh, so that you've got enough to be able to get away from them. If you run out of energy, you get punted, or you get, get hit. Um, and most of this is just AI. I'm not scripting any of this. That's just what he does, and it's great. And it's very handy because he sort of you know, tries to find a way at you and then gives up and comes back again, that kind of thing. So, yeah, great. It's really good. So, well done, Valve. That's great. Um, so, here at this point, I do actually give you a way of hurting the outlying guard. Um, if but Eagle Eye viewers, I mean, I put that in there so that you can use it to take out the outline who's attacking you. But there is an extra sort of uh, hit you can get on the downline guard if you if you can use that. Wow, that really helped. right. Okay, so um, well, so this is probably the longest run without this. It's right on me. Okay, and I think at this point I wanted to up the ante to get him really, you know, feeling quite. Um, yeah, really on your butt, and then uh, give up. And you think you've got away from him? Yeah. Um, okay, here we go. So this was a I, I built a lot of small test maps, and this was I, I, by combining different entities together. I can't remember. What, I think I noticed one of the other guys running into a barrel or something like that and exploding. I thought, oh, there's something there, so that you can sort of uh, use his own charge against him. And um, I'm very proud of this. I, this is a completely different way of play. I think the player feels quite clever for having figured it out when they do. And then it, then it's a skill to master, you know? So there's kind of the initial discovery of what, what am I supposed to do? I've got no weapons. I've got no way of attacking this thing. And then you sort of discover on your own that what's possible. And I think that's very rewarding. Even though some players might have found it a little too hard to, I don't know, might have taken them a little while to get to grips with it. I still think once you've got it, it's very rewarding. And then, of course, you're basically using your skills of movement and your power, your reserve power, to um, once again. And this is the most basic, the most basic tools you have as a player, you know, uh, which is the, your movement and your, uh, your 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 speed boost. And, and I don't think we ever really see those being used in a way, ow. Um, I don't know, it, it's nice to play around with some of those basic mechanics and, and to create some gameplay from those basic mechanics instead of just a bunch of combine coming at you, uh, shooting. Music really helps as well, it's great. I mean, so it just came together really well, I was very happy. That's too close. Even I know they can't do that. Right, okay, so you've got to get enough distance on him for him to, to sort of trigger the, uh, the charging. Uh, yeah, behavior. He's too close. So you've got another. Oh, look, there's the name. Okay. Uh, even I've forgotten where I put the names in this game. Um, but yeah, so um, and hopefully it's not too hard. I think it takes about four hits to get in. Um, there was a danger that on higher difficulties you wouldn't be able to kill it, but it's fine. You have to get all of them on the high difficulty, which is quite a nice scale as well. Oh, what's that note on his? Me. Um, okay, so this was quite a nice way of opening the way forwards without, um, you know, without being too much and, I don't know. Once again, it has to be gravity gun friendly, so 
and Mad Max are a good choice. I hate them at other times, but uh, just for that instance, just to have them appear at one point is uh, it's quite good. Okay, now we've got a weapon gate uh, for the pistol. I can't zap it, which is inconsistent because the other is in the mod you can, and, but it's equally inconsistent in uh, in the main game. I believe, from what I recall. Um, and we got ourselves a pistol. So, so now we're heading into, uh, this is another area where I basically just bought a little test map playing around with them different entities. And one thing we haven't seen that I have included them, I could include them deep down, was the floor turret. Um, and I think they're they're really cool. They're in Half-Life 2, I think when we're in the um, the administration building, the big sort of uh, before the triple strider fight. And um, they're never used ever again. And it's like, oh, this is a shame. They're really fun. Um, so I thought I'd uh, put them back in. Now, when I used them in deep down, they were... I thought that, oh, nice. It's a good throw. Um, I get, when I used them in deep down, it was a bit of a weird setup. It wasn't a great idea. It was something I was trying. Um, here is a far more traditional use of it, and um, I've actually clipped around the back of it. I think so. It's it's easier to get the grenade in because um, it's it was yeah it was pretty tricky at some point. Um, the other thing I'm doing there is I'm using a. a a hopper mine in front of a turret, and whenever I got turrets, I always put hopper mines in front so that you can't rush it, um, you can't rush the turret. But basically, there's a game of skill, and I want you to play the game of skill to get the uh... um, yeah, it's a game of skill that I want you to play, and I don't want you to uh, cheese it, as they say in America. Um, Okay, this is basically a gameplay concept which I took from Daylight, my first mod, uh, where essentially you've got temporary cover um, and you can move. Now, the only thing with this is that you really can rush through this very quickly. It's, it's quite um, basic. I like putting the um, I like putting the grubs under the floor, I thought that was quite fun. Uh, which once again is in deep down. Um, but it's amazing how many things I put into this. And at the time, I don't think I was actively trying to imitate or to lift, you know, exact gameplay concepts from the first one. But they're all here, so. Okay, that's another, another camera. Um, now this, I took some platform because I lifted this directly and obviously the next section directly out of um, well this is out of Aftermath this section and then obviously the main section below was out of um, the original Deep Down. Some people got grumpy because I was reusing things they've already played um, I just thought these were very strong elements and um, they, for me the next section was the strongest area of Deep Down so I wanted to honor that and keep it in just because it's great everyone likes it uh, and I thought that everybody would uh, would appreciate it um, so that puzzles you know fan floating around you've got to wait until you can see the, uh, the barrels before you shoot it quite a lot of people did I think they struggle with this sometimes just because uh, I thought they weren't paying attention or the, the floatiness wasn't happening the way they would, you know, that would have been made life a bit easier for them but um, yeah Either way, uh, I left it in because I like it. Uh, I'd love to do more stuff with floaty fans. It, I, I'm a huge fan of that section in, um, in Half-Life 1 where you throw the grenades and they go upwards into the wooden uh, sort of slats above and destroy it all. Um, that's really fun. Okay. So I think there's another drop where it doesn't actually do you any damage. Um, not a lot of massive changes made to this area. Um, uh, a couple of bits and bobs. I think just generally look and feel updated in, so, in some cases. Um, and for me, I just, I always really just sort of like this space. Um, and I think a lot of people found this to be their, their favourite area. Certainly, I think it was my favourite area. 
from deep down, not from deep down. So, um, yeah, this area probably represents my most uh, advanced understanding of level design in deep down. Um, I'm rushing through it because we've all played this before and we'll get on some other things, but um, the. Uh, Yeah, it looks good. I like it. The the water and the the blue light and everything it looks like that. I know it's very well, so I'm just gonna. I think there's a few changes here, so um, I could be wrong. So some people are gonna tell me I'm wrong, but it feels like there's changes. So. Oh shit! <laughs> um, okay. Oh, there we go. Um, that battle continues up there. I'm trying to remember if this is male or not. I like having, um, there's quite a lot of sections in, and it's one of the unique things about Half-Life 2 is you've got these different factions, so you've got zombies versus combine, um, all around the world. Um, oh, there is. I just wanted to do more with like the fast zombies jumping across rooftops and things like that. But I've done quite a lot of that in previous maps. I did extend this out and made this more obvious because people were complaining about the fact that they didn't see it and it was too it was too vague. Um, so I added another beam and sort of fanned it up. And then obviously the ending of this area is very different as well. Oh, there's another red crate there that you can shoot through the window uh, to cause them some problems. So that's a change. The original. Um, so now I'm starting to beef you up with, you know, plenty of ammo and, and things because of what's coming. I just noticed there's a light there that used to be on a wall, but I changed the wall for a fence, but the light is still stuck to the fence, so that's weird. Um, okay. Engine the Jonesy bit. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, let's head back, let that roll. And then obviously when we get to the top here, previously we looked at some pipes and stuff like that, whereas, uh, now I'm dropping into the combat area, which, oh, and also we've got a problem with it. It's a tough fight. Whenever you're going uphill towards bad guys, it's a tough fight, I think, but um, it can be. Okay, so here we are with another level transition, pretty much using the same shaft, which is lazy, I completely agree. Uh, for anyone who thinks it's lazy, I agree. Um, okay, down into the combine maps. And this 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 concept here I was really proud of. So if you look at um, Aftermath, I already sort of started this idea um, where you've got caves and blue blue combine marks. The, the main thing I did here was I brought in this combine architecture and smooshed it into the cave faces to, to give it this really cool look. I'm, I was really, really happy with how this turned out. Um, I really love the combine all physics uh, stuff and these catchers, these ball catchers I'm, I'm a huge fan of. They're beautiful and they uh, uh, and they remind me of Portal, I think. Um, so, okay. So this area was quite fun. So there's a, an entity called Funk Tank which allows you, is it supposed to be a tank turret? But what I realised is I can attach a uh, panel to it and with these balls I can create a, a panel that you can control and bounce, change the bounce angle, uh, which I was quite happy with. This is um, it's kind of tricky. Uh, the trickiest bit that was getting the trigger at the to that catches the ball or recognises when a ball has gone into the catcher um, to work. There, there you go. Works. So sometimes that would trigger and not turn on the thing, I think that's still a bug that sometimes occurs. Um, it's a very, very tricky balance to get right. <laughs> Keeps going guessing. Um, yeah, the uh, these light bridges, which are very similar to the light bridge from Portal 2, um, that anyone might recognise. Um, I love the idea of having force fields and uh, yeah, 
bridges which are temporary. So I was really happy that I was able to to make this happen in the in a more uh, final after I don't know after I, and I mean really these light bridges are really underused in episode one. I think there's a they're great and uh, I think they they offer quite a lot of interesting gameplay. So, so now I'm up in the difficulty quite significantly. These elites are uh, quite punishing, even on normal difficulty, which I think is normal. So. Uh, but it should be. We're at the end, so this this should be hard, and you should be good by now. Right? Um, a lot of this I lifted straight out of the official Valve maps, just the architecture and stuff like that. Um, this I was also very proud of. So you know, there's a number of different gameplay gameplay concepts I'm bringing in here which are new which we haven't seen before which is what is always my goal um, this is a model that I don't remember actually ever seeing in the official games it's in the, it's in the model set but I don't remember ever actually seeing it um, um, you do have unlimited of these which I'm not sure if people understood um, but hopefully they will do they run out of options yeah, that's one. The other thing to note about these combine energy balls is they've got kind of like an auto-targeting thing on them. If they're a bad guys to hit, it will throw off the trajectory of it off the bounce, um, which is problematic when it comes to the puzzle. But anyway, but the idea that you have a almost like a locking key system, which you have control of, uh, I quite like that, that, that concept. Um, whereas before, I think whenever we had this, you had to you had to you'd be using the super gravity gun to do it. But I like the idea. Of, I don't didn't want to do super gravity gun gameplay, so it's quite nice that the R2. I was quite happy to find out that the R2 could do this. So, and once again, something we hadn't seen before is to use the weapon energy balls for other purposes. Um, oh, uh, some people missed the fact this was here. Kept going all the way back to the other end. Um, Stalkers. Stalkers are really cool. They look really cool. Uh, they have no gameplay in them at all. They don't do anything. Trying to get them to use their head laser is almost impossible. I found um, I gave up on trying to because I, I thought they'd be quite cool as like new types of zombies to close in on you and stuff. But actually, there's just not enough coding in them to make them of any use at all. Even with like, a damage trigger strapped to them as they get close. Um, so people, some people. No, this is a completely bonus sort of win, if you like, that I put in. It's not the way forward, you don't have to do it, but there's goodies on the other side. Uh, and you just need a good rebound shot to open it. Um, that took quite a while to, to line up to get it so that it wasn't really hard to do. Um, personally, I think this balance is about right. The goodies on the far side are a bit disappointing because, oh, well, that's what I've already got. So I should probably. I don't know, can swap it out for something else. But at this point, we've pretty much given the player all the weapons. There isn't really anything more that you could give them. Uh, maybe they're making my space. Uh, okay. But yeah, getting these rebound uh, angles and things right so that they weren't too hard uh, was, was pretty tricky. It took a while. But I was very happy when I got it working. <laughs> this is where we spent another, yeah, like earlier. Well, Spent another four hours trying to solve the puzzle. I can't remember how to do this. I guess hopefully it's a fun game. It's not tedious for people to Let's see if we can. Yeah, okay. So it takes a while, but I mean, it's not hard. It's not too impossible to do. Okay, more light bridges. Um, uh, there's a stalker up there if anyone had noticed. Um, it's just to add a bit of flavour to the area, really. Just got some architecture. Okay, this was um, uh, an idea that I played around with once again, toying around with what's possible. Um, the idea that you can see this guy teleport in and. Uh, then use the teleporter yourself, so it's not only something that's there for show, it's something that's actually functional. Um, I was hoping to use it in more of a combat setting, but 
just became too complex and I but I really wanted to include it. And this poor guy is just like, you know, takes ages to get there, opens the door and you kill him instantly. But uh, whatever, it's all part of the fun. It was really just to show off something cool once again. Uh, and I wanted to put in as much sort of combine cool uh, stuff in this last section as possible. Sorry, my cat is standing on my head. Demanding lunch, but he's too early. Uh, okay, so there you go. I mean, as I said, I'm throwing in combine gadgets and things to make it cool, as well as these floor panels as well. These I wanted to you can see they're floating in the middle. <laughs> There's nothing hard anymore. I wanted to. Uh, I really like the movable panels in Portal Two uh, that, that the whole rooms get constructed from. So, so I tried to replicate that a little. Uh, it's fun, but it serves no purpose. It's just purely there for. But it feels very combined. I think. So we're heading in, and then, you know, so I've introduced the concepts, and then it's like, well, let's have some fun with it. And now, so that one's there, it's like, oh, great, so it's like a leap of faith at this point now. Uh, I have to trust that the panel's going to open up for me, and it does, which I was, once again, very happy with. That's just a trigger multiple where I'm entering and leaving it. There we go. And, uh, yeah, I really like that. That's fun. Uh, also, at this late stage, you know, it should be combat heavy, but... I can put in a puzzle and it doesn't feel too jarring or, or you know, a gameplay and it doesn't feel too jarring. So this was commented on a lot, you know, here we've got Alex. Now, I am not someone who can do animations or custom voice stuff or anything like that. We, anyone who's seen my previous efforts will know that I'm just not that good at it. So what I'm trying to convey here is that she has got a teleporter, she's working and that there's a bunch of, um, Magnus and devices and crates. Now these are the things that are going to get teleported down the way into the main final battle in a minute, implying that she's the one sending them to us, although it would have been good to have her walk up to the glass and put her hand on the glass or something and say, you know, I'll support you from here, it's downstairs or something like that. I just, that whole scripting story stuff is just not really my, my thing, unfortunately. Okay, so now into our final map. Um, this took a while to get the um, scanner to come and check you out as you came down. This is actually a, a clip brush and this wall is, is transparent. So as far as the scanner is concerned, there is no wall between you and it. So it's just doing what it does normally. Um, but I liked, uh, yeah, I really like the idea of being scanned. It's always gone, what is it? Anyway, um, oh, there he goes. But, uh, yeah, that was fun. I'd seen that before. I know to give that sense of scale uh, so you can watch him fly away and then uh, take in the scale of the room you're about to move into. The roof is just black. You can see it's just visible blackness. At some point, maybe I'll go back and do a really nice cavern roof. Um, these cave shapes make no sense at all, uh, but they work for the gameplay purposes and no one really questioned them. Uh, players can be quite forgiving when they're busy. Uh, th some people might say that's a little slow, uh, I think it's just good dramatic tension. Um, also, the angles and the reflections here, I wanted to really make the most of. Uh, um, look at, yeah, it's great. When you get the reflections working, these lights and everything, I think it's a great effect. It's really cool. So, how many people realize this was uh, supposed to be Overwatch? I was going to have a character spell it out and uh, once again because I'm very good at uh, doing scripting or character stuff uh, I didn't do that but um, you know hopefully yeah I'm really telegraphing this quite strongly so I'm hoping there's a very obvious no could have made more of that as well because that, that other bit is really Anyway, um, it's amazing how many people thought you had to kill the Striders to win. Um, there's a bald thing here, there's one there. I don't know, I really tried to, you know, to telegraph this as best I could, but um, I don't know, something's missing. Some people didn't get it and thought you just had to kill the Striders. Uh, now, obviously, I haven't given you a rocket launcher, because uh, I stripped you of weapons when you used to have it. Uh, 
And uh, yeah, so now you've got to find a way to kill the Striders without uh, a rocket launcher. Some uh, people. Well, I think I think quite a lot of people like this. I really like them. Shit. Uh, the uh, maintenance and devices. A lot of people. Uh, some people like them. Some people hate them. I think they were genius. It's sort of the culmination of all the skills that you've learned up to this point. At the end of episode two is for me one of the uh, best sort of game design areas in history uh, just because it brings together all of the skills you've learned driving the car um, learning how to use the maintenance and devices um, yeah all in one map amazing just realized I did hit one of those before now I don't think this is a particularly tough area Doesn't help when he's not going to come for me, but okay, fair enough. Uh, but hopefully, it's a more satisfying ending than it beat down, as we saw before. Um, it feels busy, it feels dangerous, it feels like you're getting hurt a lot, but actually, you're not. You've got loads of health. Uh, oh, I'm happy with that as well. Come on. Nice. Um, the cat's clawing me as well, so... Whoa, okay. Uh, so I think it's a good sign. I built this, I've played it many times, I can still have a good time playing it. So if you're enjoying playing your own map, it's a good sign. I think. Um. Ow! Motherfucker! Get off, cat. Right. <laughs> Let's put a... Language rating. Now I'm going to kill them because I can and it's fun, but you don't have to. Right, okay, cool. So moving back. Let's see how it's going to activate now, isn't it? Um, some other ones over there. Okay. I think this is an energy thing as well. You know, it's about crossing a certain amount of distance and staying alive while you're doing it. Uh, I mean, all the elements from the original... Oh man, I'm on fire today, come on. Uh, all the uh, all the elements from the original game, uh, the finale of Deep Down, are here. It's just I've beefed it up and made it. Come on. I didn't realise they let out a, like a, an alarm thing. <laughs> okay, cool. That was the last one. Uh, so I think it depends on... The ending, um, which is a bit of a damn script, maybe. There's a, I don't know. Um, hopefully, at the end, at least, this is the reveal of what it is you've just done. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, so there's there's bits I would change, there's things I would update, you know, things I could make look better. Um, but for such a sizable piece of work quite happy with how it ended up. It was very buggy when we first uh, when I first released it and uh, got some bad press for that but I was I'm happy with how it is now. I think it it, sort of, it, it lines up quite nicely. Um, obviously in the credits we've got Ed for his model work and um, my friend Fellastomp also created some of the BSP stuff here. Think he did um, Overwatch at the end which is great. It all in BSP mapping which he's very very good at that. Was excellent, um, and then uh, Lonnie Boy, well, Abraham Lee, it's my friend, uh, really helped out with some of the level design areas, and obviously he joined us earlier. Um, and then finally, we've got Anacator's music playing over the top, which uh, I really like. It's sort of half lifey, um, and finally Maname and the uh, uh, Martin is, is you know, a friend and he's always helpful for technical stuff because he's so technical and he spends so long over his work that he really knows everything there is to know about this stuff so it was very helpful to have friends like that um, 
hope you enjoyed listening to this, um, and I will maybe do a bit more of this ton stuff in the future. Uh, we'll see. Thanks a lot. Bye.